For my own academic career, it would have been better if I had just said, here's the design inference, now let me get my tenure track position, get well established in the philosophical world, and then put my cards on the table. But I didn't do that, and so, uh, so I paid the cost. Cambridge University Press originally was really happy to publish the design inference, and then uh, they started having misgivings. I mean, that became clear to me when I approached them to do a sequel to the book where I was going to apply these ideas to evolutionary biology. This was actually a book titled No Free Lunch, and I ended up publishing it with a different publisher, but um, I thought they would be happy to publish it because the design inference had done very well for them. Uh, obviously not New York Times bestseller stuff. I mean, this was a philosophical monograph, but for, for what it was, they, they were very happy with it. But when I approached my editor, when I said I'd like to do this sequel, and he was a stand-up guy. He took me aside, essentially, uh, and said, you know, uh, he, we're going to need to see the most controversial chapters in this book. And even if it gets accepted on this side of the Atlantic as a you know, where the academics say, yep, yeah, it's, it's good. The referees say, give it a thumbs up. He said, I should warn you that there are one or two biologists on the Cambridge Syndicate in England and that uh, they will probably not go for it. So what he was telling me essentially was, I mean, if a book gets accepted with Cambridge University Press on this side of the Atlantic, the Cambridge Syndicate, which has to finally you know, sign off on it, typically rubber stamps it, but in my case, they wouldn't rubber stamp it. And so that's, you know, once, once he told me that, it was clear to me that uh, they, they weren't really so thrilled with the book anymore. And, you know, I had, it wasn't just that I was saying, hey, I want to apply these ideas to evolutionary biology. In the interim, I had published an anthology called Mere Creation with InterVarsity Press. I'd also written a book, Intelligent Design, The Bridge Between Science and Theology, because I was applying these ideas also uh, to greater cultural worldview, theological issues. You know, so I, I, I want to stress, I think at its core, intelligent design is a scientific notion. If it, does, if it can't hold up scientifically, it's going nowhere. And it's crucial that we cash out the debate over intelligent design as a science versus science controversy, a science of design versus a science of Darwinism, if you will. Uh, but uh, so it's not a religion versus science controversy, but that's, uh, that's how it how it played out. So the uh, the press they knew that you know my my cards in a sense weren't on the table when I published the design inference. And I think it for my own academic career it would have been better you know less would have been more you know if I had just said here's the design inference now let me get my tenure track position get well established in the philosophical world and then put my cards on the table. But I I didn't do that and so. Uh, so I paid the cost. Mm -hmm.